Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel, welcome back if you've been here before. Today is box opening day on our kit of the week and if you didn't already know, the kit of the week is the wonderful Hawker Hunter F Mark VI in 148th scale from Airfix. Now, if you want to see what's in the box and you're thinking maybe of buying one, this is probably a good video to watch. If you've already got one or one's on the way and you want to see how to put it together, there's a companion video that shows you how to do exactly that. And of course, after that, there drops the combo video with the box opening, all of the build, and the bonus historical material as well. So watch out for that. If you like the video, and I hope you do, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The link to do that is the small logo down there in the bottom right corner. If you'd like to support future productions, you can do so through Patreon and through Buy Me A Coffee. Links to both of these are in the information box below. There's also a link to the Airfix online store. If you click on that and then buy anything from the store, Airfix will give this channel a little bit of money at no extra cost to you. And by the way, remember if you're an Airfix club member, you will get a 10% online discount as well. Okay, enough of all of that. Let's get on and make the Hawker Hunter F6 and we'll start with a look at what's inside the box. This kit is the first Hunter in 148 scale made by FX with tooling dating from 2019. There is a companion version of the F4, F5 or the Swedish J34 released in the same year. This has slightly different parts notably the lack of a dogtooth wing leading edge. In terms of competition, there is the 2017 release of the Hunter F6 or FGA9 from Italeri, or the 2016 Hunter F6 release from Academy. Both of these are derived from the same Academy 1997 new tooling. One benefit of the Academy and Italeri range is that so far there are a lot of conversion and detail sets available on the aftermarket, but I'm sure many will be adapted to the FX kit as well before too long. This FX kit comes with 116 pieces, not all of which are going to be needed. The kit is rated at skill level two, which seems about right, and it comes with a token for three flying hours. You can collect these as a member of the FX club towards a new kit in the future, or you can donate them to Models for Heroes. A link to this excellent charity is in the information box below. Looking inside the box, there are three sprues of gray plastic. The first here has the fuselage, the engine intakes, and the flaps. The second sprue has the wings, tailplanes, and some underwing stores. And the last one here has the cockpit components, all the undercarriage and various other small bits and pieces. The transparency sprue has a windscreen and canopy plus a single combined unit. This is a great idea as the open canopy needs to be slightly oversized to fit over the spine of the fuselage and the closed canopy, well why make two pieces and have another join? Occasionally the plastic seems a little bit rough on the surface from the mould. I'll see if that needs a touch of filling later on. But overall the panel lines are reasonably deep and wide. Maybe not as much as some recent kits, but enough for panel washing later on. The cockpit walls are a little sparse as usual, with just some framing apparent. And the cockpit tub itself is also a little low on detail considering the scale. The instrument panel has very prominent moulding of the dials. Now this is going to be great for dry brushing, but it will make decal placement very difficult. A nice touch in the kit is that there are inserts for the ejection seats with and without straps, presumably in case you want to put a pilot inside. Sadly, no such figure is provided, but there are many available on the aftermarket. The skinny tyres have waiting flat spots these are keyed to the wheel hubs, which themselves have rectangular holes for the axles to ensure the flat spots are in the correct place. The future development of this kit is apparent with the tail cone supplied. This here is the one for the F6. But there's also one for the F6A and FGA9, as it includes a housing for the brake parachute. 
Given that one sprue already has Metro Rocket Packs, not required for this kit, maybe we'll get an FGA9 release before too long, perhaps with weapons options on a separate sprue. Overall, the moulding, even in very fine parts like this ejection seat initiator handle, is sharp and clean and free of any major flash issues. The instruction sheet is very much to the usual modern ethics standard. Inside the diagrams are shaded and there are orange highlights of parts previously fitted and green to depict cutaway views. Here you can see the one piece closed canopy and two piece open canopy options. The kit allows for the flaps to be shown deployed, likewise the speed brake. These seem to be the options chosen for this particular kit. The aircraft will need some weight to keep the nose on the ground. Airfix suggests 20 grams here just behind the cockpit. The last pages of the instruction seat are the stencil placement diagrams, one for each of the three schemes offered. The schemes themselves are on high quality printed sheets. Scheme A is an aircraft of 63 Squadron RAF with the option of special markings for the Battle of Britain display in 1958. This is the scheme shown in the box art. Of course, there is an option to have the aircraft as it was before these extra markings were painted on. Scheme B is an aircraft of number four flying training school as seen in 1968. And Scheme C is an aircraft of 324 Squadron, Royal Netherlands Air Force in 1964. There are also many, many aftermarket decal sets for the Hunter F6 available. The decal sheet itself is comprehensive to say the least. Printed by Cartograph of course and up to their usual high standards of sharpness, colour fidelity and registration. In the top of the sheet we have the common stencils, although this isn't quite true as we'll see in a moment. There are also the roundels for the two RAF aircraft. Further down are the markings for the 63 Squadron aircraft. In its harlequin patterns you paint a base of yellow on first and then use the decals to create the black checkers. Below this are the fin flashes for the two RAF aircraft. Then the markings for the aircraft from four FTS. Note that the underwing serials are available entire for models with retracted undercarriage and in sections for models with lowered undercarriage as the serials cover several of the gear doors. Some of the upper surface stencils are replaced here by those printed in yellow rather than black. And lastly, but by no means least, are the markings for the Royal Netherlands Air Force aircraft. Some of the stencils are replaced with Dutch standard patterns. There we go, quite a lot to think about there. I'm sure you'll agree, lots of choices to be made. Now, if you've enjoyed this, then please do remember, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, you can do that by clicking on that small logo down there in the bottom right corner. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.